Aloha and welcome back to another space weather update. Today was insane. I'll be honest with you, there was a lot coming through. There's a lot of things to tell you. So let's get into it, you know, it's time. It's time to talk about it. I'm posting like crazy today, but let's talk about it. <laughs> so the sun, our beautiful friend, you know, you know him, you love him. The sun sent off a massive solar flare right after the sunspot turned away from Earth. So it was slightly out of range, I would say, from us to even be able to measure it, which was, I believe, wasn't even discussed enough or responsibly enough in the community. They just sort of rolled with the best guesstimate and carried on. But for me, and this study, obviously, you know, I'm not used to brushing it off and carrying on. I like to dig into moments that I am suspicious about and want to learn more from because these opportunities allow us to learn so much. So these, these solar flares, and there's been some into today, there's more, there's a sunspot that is earth facing that's also active. I'll show you that in a second. So the sunspot that turned away exploded and they were claiming that it may have been up to an x5 potential could have been even more powerful i'm not even sure but here it is here it comes and you can see all of these little sparks tossing around that's the solar proton storm you can see that happened after this major solar flare episode we can zoom out a little bit here that was the first beautiful one on the sixth seventh there was a minor one and it got slow into the 8th. We had a nice little break in the 8th. And pretty much as soon as the 9th began, we began seeing some major shifts. And there it was. That was the largest shift. And potentially it was now classified, which is also difficult. But since they don't have the exact number, it's tricky to know. Is it the second most powerful solar flare of solar cycle 25? Or is it even more powerful than an X5 or the X5 we got on January 31st for the new year? And now we're getting this X3.3, whatever they chose, whatever number they felt comfortable with on the lunar new year, basically hours before the new moon and our brand new lunar new year, we got another massive solar flare, the second most powerful in the solar cycle 25. So. January 31st, February 9th, those New Year's Eve energies both produced a massive solar flare and also large earthquakes on Earth, which was the follow-up story to all of this, I would say. So there were a number, there was 333, 333 earthquakes today actually can't tell where what is the timing of that what is the timing of that I would say we're gonna figure that out maybe in a day maybe in a week in the 24 hours in the past 24 hours there were a thousand earthquakes with the most powerful being a 6.2 in and off the coast of Big Island Hawaii where all of the earthquakes were gathering pretty much last the last week then there was a brief pause and we all thought oh the the quakes are going to calm down we're going to be fine and it seemed like the finale sort of landed and people were shaking all over the big island and even the other islands were starting to feel it i was getting reports from honolulu of people in their work buildings being shook from this and as we're reeling from this decently large earthquake in <laughs> in Hawaii we also had just across the pond over here a 4.6 earthquake just outside of Miami basically 4.6 and a bunch of others that just kind of piled on top of each other along this plate right here and this area quakes that's where these mountains were created it's it's a normal area it's not abnormal 
It's just a high population density, as well as a high population density of people who have cell phones, cell phone cameras, a social media platform, and the audacity to post about it. Them LA folk, and I'm a part of that gang. I can't help it. I'm, I'm on that, <laughs> on that rhythm as well. So we understand each other, but there was concern. So now that we've moved over into February 10th officially, they were uh, there was on February the 9th. It seems like there was 150 quakes, and then we moved into the day the 10th, and we're about an hour in now hour and a half into the new day and about I would say two and a half hours from the new moon that officially happened and so on has moved on so thankfully unlike the Japanese earthquake that happened on the after the earthquake on the 31st the one in Hawaii and even in New Zealand which happened earlier that day even was I would say not as deadly or as destructive to civilization as the earthquake in Japan which they're still recovering from from the 31st of January so I know it is a long time to recover from some big things like that but they definitely got hit pretty hard but thankfully this time around for the lunar new year it wasn't as destructive there is flooding in Spain and Argentina today from potentially the movement of all this water and reaction of these solar flares but the solar wind is slightly high the reports of this flare went out everybody was informed at least a little bit and our polar caps started absorbing solar protons like crazy and this is when the earthquakes kind of started is when the solar proton storm after the solar flares picked up that's when the earthquake started shaking, in my opinion. That was the evidence of that. So here is our flare. This is us over the last three days. Last 24 hours. The last six hours. You see we had one little M flare in the last six hours. Well, in the last two hours for sure. But in the last 24 hours, about, you know, halfway now. We're about halfway through the day since this happened. Here is our X3.36. So those of you who saw the Mylar balloon that floated over me randomly in the desert just a few days ago with a giant number three on it, and we were all like, what was that? What does that mean? Well, it is the ninth. It was a 3.36, lots of three threes in there. So maybe that was the message. Some people were saying that that might have been the case. Very interesting. But it sucks too because, like I said, it was an indiscernible solar flare in my opinion but now they're saying it's a 3.3 but it was there's the 5.0 from january 1st it was on the other side of the sun so this was kind of like a solar flare or x flare hug from one limb to the other limb of the sun you see that interesting but yeah this 3.3 or whatever it actually was in the if it was direct we would have been able to measure it better but it wasn't it had just turned away from us and exploded but this episode it came in really drastically see how this extreme level of radiation just jumps all the way up here and then it dissipated over hours of time pretty much all of really today I would say this we have the cascading down back to kind of where we were before the solar flare if you can see that here <laughs> it's still sitting slightly above that point with radiation and the radiation we're sitting in just for a visual, if that helps. So we're slightly more radiated still than we were when that kind of rolled in. So he, that's the direction that this this flared went. Like I said, it was not Earth facing. Earth is this the little yellow dot over here, over here and over here. But who did get hit? Who got it? It was Venus, heavily. Mercury, Venus, and a little bit of Mars is going to get this. It may actually hit Mars harder than I'm thinking because I'm seeing the wave kind of turns there. So the inner planets plus our homie on the outside of us, Mars, is expected to be receiving the energy of this X, whatever it is, towards them and whatever they're up to. So Godspeed on that one. Enjoy, <laughs> as it's already probably moved past Mercury and Venus almost, it's the wave of all of that and the extremities of it are still going to move past us for the next three days but the solar proton storm like i said 
It came in hours after the solar flare. The reports had to come in and show how quickly those protons were anchoring in and absorbing into our polar ice caps. When it comes to coronal holes, we have almost nothing. I'm seeing almost no coronal holes, which is very good. Very little problems, I would say, lasting issues right now in the Earth-facing energy. But we have this sunspot 3576. The one that hit us was called 3575. And you can't see it anymore. They've turned it out of view. And 3576, this huge cluster over here, is flaring us right now with smaller M-class radiation. And this is Earth-facing, so this is direct. But we're so we're in a we're in an area of radiation, and it won't stop. This sunspot is going to continue. As I'm shooting this video, I was in the dark orange of the global consciousness numbers here. And I was surprised that I was functioning. But I think because maybe we're getting so much more solar radiation right now that we're functioning better even in lower coherency, which is just a theory. I don't know if that's true. I am just talking. This is all theoretical. The global consciousness dot here is probably the most fun and the least serious part of this study. But it definitely, it definitely adds good flavor to every video. The big... Winner today in the cryptocurrency market was Stronghold, SHX, the currency or the token or whatever. It has been very active. And if you want to go to Cosmic Origins YouTube channel, there is a live stream of this movement. And people will often want, want to get into buying something when they see it going up in price and people earning money. But usually it's too late for that product to buy into because it's already moved into its new level of worth. But it's possible also that this can, continue, can continue going up. So that's kind of the game that everybody plays. But this boost has brought wealth to people. And you can see the updates over here. People who invested in it all the way down here are very much having a different portfolio today. And it's smaller decimal points than you think but it still matters and I'm watching it unfold. Now with the rest of the currencies that kind of lead with the day, there's a lot of movement as well. Their growth is basically coming in. Spring has sprung in a way. The energy is arriving. You saw that X flare, the protons, the physical matter coming out of the sun to add to earth and our feelings of wealth, our own, I would say our bodies get charged. Therefore we can work and produce more in a way too. So if that's even the most basic way to understand how that system works, I hope that helps make a picture for you. The Russian American drama over the last 24 hours also peaked for sure. A uh, really, really important exchange and dialogue between the two countries happened and was given out to people via x.com. So if you want to look that up, the president of Russia was interviewed in this period of time that, well, not actually, he was interviewed on the 6th, I think. And so this is the 9th and the release of it was around this time. The release of that interview was around this time, if I'm under, if I'm remembering right. And now we're, we're being bathed in this right here. More radiation, obviously. This is electromagnetic radiation that's on between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. That's what this is measuring between 0 and 40 hertz. Just a small zoom in of that particular section of the electromagnetic spectrum, which they call the extremely low frequency spectrum or the ELF or ELF frequencies. And these frequencies matter because they're in the range of our brain waves, as well as all the teeny tiny beautiful little animals and even the big ones around our planet that have that have brains <laughs> it all it matters to all of us in my opinion and through the study i've understood and so if your brain's been super active today and you've been like oh i can't seem to calm down it just seems like it keeps going and going and going like don't worry because that's called entrainment and we have evidence of why that is happening you don't have to take full responsibility all the time and i have evidence of that occurring in italy as well same timing even though in Italy, it is slightly less intense, I would say, than what's showing up in Russia. But as you know, what's happened on the public 
stage, doesn't surprise me that maybe Rush is showing off a little bit more. They have maybe a little bit more going on. Makes sense. HeartMath.org is struggling. They're many days behind, but South Africa is still showing evidence of, of more stimulation than other parts of the planet. But South Africa is a very busy node. It's also seemingly have, has gone down in intensity since the 6th. Again, the day of that interview. The actual day, the 6th. South Africa was screaming about something. So did you hear her? What did she say? I'm curious. What did South Africa tell you guys? When it comes to the amplitude of those two recent waves, they've stayed under a 50 nanotesla amplitude measurement. Those frequencies, the primary frequency of Earth, the Schumann, primary Schumann resonance anyways, got just under 49 nanotesla. Uh, it looks like the current blast is also trying to basically match the intensity of the one that happened you know, at the beginning of the day. So here's the hours, hour 12, and we're get coming up on hour 12 again. So we're, this is one whole day, this period right here from peak to peak. So the beginning of the last 12 hours and now it's interesting. 24 hours though before that, like the whole 24 hour window here. Actually, no, this is a 24 hour period. Sorry, my bad. I'm screwing that up, please. I'm so sorry. Pay attention, I am correcting myself. <laughs> this hour 12 and this hour 12, obviously that is 24 hours, please excuse me. So this is a 24 hour period we're looking at right here, where again, the conditions now are looking a lot like the conditions that were same time yesterday. Now, what else do I have to show you before we move along? Just some more anomalies in the earthquake behavior. It's pretty much showing all over the map. The earth is shaking and groaning and moving in response to that X flares, in my opinion. Even though it wasn't earth directed, those protons and everything, the radiation was clearly coming in and coming at us still. Thankfully, though, not direct. I feel like we would not have enjoyed that. So I'm glad that that wasn't the case. Looking at the, the lightning grounding in, at least what's being reported, of course, about the lightning. I don't have all the truest data. I do my best. Public data is public data. It can be flubbed and noodled all the time. I'm not in control of any of these websites and their morals or their consistency. But I hold it against all these other sources to make sure we're getting some sort of picture, some sort of accuracy about all the jet streams and the air moving around and what's getting pushed around. Lots of energy. It looks like there's a lot of cyclones and tropical storms going on. Over here, they're getting some winter energy starting to show up in the southern hemisphere, it looks like. It's what I'm getting. And again, New Zealand had that earthquake. Hawaii had that earthquake. And then California had that earthquake. So it looks like almost like you could draw a line up from here to here. A little bit of a straight line of where all those earthquakes kind of showed up today, I would say, and stood out the most today. Okay, let's look at the magnetosphere of the Earth. So let's see what we're bodying right now and how the magnetic lines are looking. Okay, we're seeing some heat. I'm already seeing without even loading the videos. Here we go. Heat. Okay, not so bad, not so bad. A little bit more confusing with the magnetic lines than with the pressure on the magnetic lines, which is good. So not as much pressure, but still bizarre. I would say magnetic field interactions. Our planet is engaging in more complex magnetic field interactions. This is quite interesting, actually. It doesn't normally fold around like this. There is some very strange interactions with the magnetic field right now, which maybe explains why the global consciousness dot is in an orange, but we're still feeling normal. Yeah, the conditions are a little wacky out there, a little bit odd as we're bodying all of this extra radiation. So the Mayan Oracle for today, as we move into the new lunar year, so let's make sure I've loaded this so I have for sure what we've got. Okay, yeah. Here it is, I made sure. Okay, so we've got the red solar Skywalker, explains why I'm wearing red right now. 
It says, Galactic Activation Portal. I pulse in order to explore, realizing wakefulness. I seal the output of space with the solar tone of intention. Yeah, for real. I am guided by the power of universal water. Mm -hmm. I am a galactic activation portal. Enter me. So today's a portal day. So that makes sense. The pul I pulse in order to explore. Um, yeah, the earth is certainly pulse. The sun and the earth were certainly pulsing today. It was certainly waking people up. I had a great sleep though while it was happening, ironically. Woke up and then tackled this day and all these reports. And then the solar tone of intention, indubitably, there was certainly some intentions coming out with such a huge solar flare. And then we have the universal water coming in too, which is the ethers and whatever between us and the sun that all of this stuff has traveled through. So I'm definitely resonating with that, the language of that today. I never used to resonate and really struggle to understand the language of the Mayan calendar, but I now with practice, I'm starting to see those themes and those words really are kind of showing up in the daily activity. So it's been fun. It's starting to click. The new moon happened today at right before hour 23 universal time, which is right before four o'clock mountain time in Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius, which concerns your calves, your ankles, your shins, and your Achilles heel. Shouldn't be getting any type of surgery either today. Yesterday, we were more dealing with our backbone and our joints as well. So moving into this, we've kind of been moving down the bones. So now we're all the way at our ankles and we're gonna move into our feet and toes this weekend into Monday. And then Tuesday, we're going to go right back up to the head and the teeth and the tongue and the arteries in Aries energy, lunar energy. So I was just talking about a lot about the teeth, but hey, as an Aquarius moon, I certainly can talk to you about ankles and how strong my calves are <laughs> right now. <And laughs> <laughs> but the ankle is one of the injuries that I've, I've incurred a few times and now knowing that this is kind of a theme. I take better care not to be skipping around or wearing um, shoes that are unsturdy. I'm flat, my feet flat on the ground and I walk carefully, <laughs> for sure. The Aurora Borealis yet has not kind of risen to the occasion, but into the next couple days, I hope that it maybe does. I'm seeing there is though a little bit of evidence, at least over the last few days, of a little bit more solar wind, a little bit more potential for aurora, aurora borealis to grow so thank you again if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe we are leveling out with our subscriptions coming in but we are on our way to 7,000 followers thank you so much we're watching the planets move into the sign of aquarius including pluto mercury and the moon mars is getting close venus is getting close they're starting to maybe get a little bit more <laughs> Uranian in energy versus Saturnian. So we're going more into Uranian energy for sure, but we also have Neptune and Saturn in Pisces. We've got an Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. So we've got some grounded luck and grounded innovation. We've got some, we've got some help with dreaming up better structures, I believe, with this placement. And yeah, more dreams, more speaking, more innovating, more imagining in areas of humanitarian, everybody wins sort of energy. So that's fantastic. Loving that. Loving the vibe today. Even though it was crazy, I was still managing it better than I can. So I was glad. Aquarian moon energy. I, I got that opportunity to have that home, home team <laughs> batting today. If you aren't yet, please, you know, check out my last couple videos. Check out the link tree under this video or in my bio. I have not only resources for fun, but I have resources of all my space weather links. You could do one of these shows yourself with your own flavor, with all the resources I use pretty much, pretty much all are in here. In whatever language that you actually speak and translate it for people. So please, we're trying to get multilingual here. I know it's happening, especially with Spanish. 
speakers, but Spanish speakers are still asking for more. Whatever languages that you do speak, please begin helping share this in those languages. I know there's a translate app, but it's easier, you know, easier said than done. So please, if you feel like that's going to be you, go on and do it. Please check out my merchandise if you would want to share some codes about the Schumann Resonances, Solar Flares, being a guardian, even the good news about Christ consciousness in general. I've got that going on. Instagram is popping. Please, you know, if you're, you haven't checked my Instagram yet and you're an Instagram person, I'd love to have you because that's where I have the most fun. It's the most experimental place. And then I bring you these more concise videos with what I've learned over on Instagram and talking to all of you and the telegram as well. My ascensiondiaries.com is where you can meet up with me though and have one-on-one -on -one sessions either by donation or you can schedule it schedule a pre-created option when you log on to my website it's going to prompt you to put in your email please do so and then yes you can either do a donation based session here and that'll donate to my paypal.me slash ds beings or divine sovereign beings long form and that donation will go in make a note about what you need what you'd like and we'll set it up for you or you can book one of my pre-packaged offerings at this time patreon's a great time we're having a great time the alpha centaurids are still rolling through as our meteors of concern but yeah we've got the wood dragon energy moving in we said goodbye to our beautiful water rabbit love you i had a great time water rabbit year it worked out beginning of it no second half yes same goes with this year. It seems like me, Rooster, second half of this year, even more smoother than the first, but thankfully this first half and everything's supposed to be smoother for me this year. Thank goodness, Rooster energy. But dragons out here, I'm talking to you. If any of you are a wood dragon, let me know. You are the star, the superstar year for you. Wood dragons are self-assured, natural charisma. They can take on challenges fearlessly. They are caring and compassionate. They can help others. They are determined. They are creative. They are also really good communicators. They love good adventures. They have natural leadership, friendly, approachable, and skilled with tricky situations, finding peaceful resolutions. So I relate to the wood dragon on that one particular motion for sure and be sure to look up your own chinese zodiac if you don't know it from your own birth year and how it engages with the elements and the symbol of the dragon this year how is that going to work out for you there's plenty of write-ups obviously everything's being pushed now to look up and learn all that information final note though for this video and the year of the dragon as i prepare to join my friends in their own live stream right now is the magic i would say of the east and of china and their ways of determining things as well is going to become more known to us and we're going to learn more about their modalities for spirituality so i'm excited to learn more thank you all so much for joining me on today's video and i will see you on the next one bye for now